Uh, hello, 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 hello. How's it going, everybody, from the last mark? Uh, I am here with the whole team, practically, but uh, just because no one in the audience knows who you are, how about we do a quick round of intros? Uh, maybe starting with Cheryl. Cheryl, what uh, did you do on this fantastic movie? I am the screenwriter and a co-producer as well. And Maddie, what did you do? I'm one of the producers. And I do believe there might be a couple actors in the room. Make yourselves known. I'm Bryce, I play Palmer. <laughs> uh, and I'm Jonas, I play Eli in the film. Thanks everybody. Uh, so let's get into it. We only have a, a few short minutes to chat, but uh, let's start maybe with the script. Cheryl, where did this idea come from? It's. Uh, not really your typical, you know, thriller. Yeah, um, actually, I have a story by credit split with Bruno Marino, who is the producer on the film. And um, maybe many years ago, I cannot remember how many now, uh, he had this desire to do a festival film that was a thriller. And those are challenging because, you know, budget restraints. So we were brainstorming of how to do something that's very character driven and, and meaty, but can also take place somewhere that is cheap to shoot. So, <laughs> and from there, we, we got into a lot of questions about, you know, uh, what makes a really good thriller and um, the lead characters, motivations, and how we can kind of make it a little bit different than what you've seen in the past. And do you want to dig a little bit deeper, I guess, without maybe doing too many spoilers, since this is going to be on yeah. the social media, but in terms of that, uh, what makes this different, let's say, than your typical genre fair? Um, yeah, part of it is the female perspective a little bit through a male lens. Um, some questions about morality from uh, the assassins, specifically the lead Keel. Um, he's not necessarily your most uh, macho uh, assassin. He has some, some demons that he's trying to um, deal with throughout the film and whether or not he can overcome them is a big question. Uh, so I wanted to take kind of like a feminine lens of, of being like, a little bit like a sad assassin, like he, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I think that totally, totally lands. And uh, it just makes it different than what you would uh, expect. Like even looking at the title of the film, you're like, oh, I know what I'm in for. And that's not quite what you're in for. Uh, Maddie, can you talk about sort of, I guess, the challenges of finding a project like this and then, you know, convincing funders that, you know, this atypical thriller is something that they should give money to? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it was as challenging to convince them because there's unique elements to the team. You know, Cheryl's the writer and Reem was directing. So there's a lot of women involved and it's typically a masculine sort of, it's a masculine genre often. So that was unique to the project. I also think that the story had this underpinning of this father-daughter relationship that they're trying to navigate in these crazy circumstances and that was very appealing. Um, so there was a few things that it had going for it that set it aside from your average thriller. And I think that that was a big element to people coming on board. Yeah, what, what specifically attracted you to the project? Like what was it that really, I guess, spoke to you and made you think I need to be a part of this? Yeah, I mean, I have worked on a few genre films with Gearshift, Borga, Dorder, and Jordan Barker are the other producers on The Last Mark, and we've done a few projects together, and I was very excited about this one having uh, women writing and directing it, like it, I have never had that before in this particular space, so that was very exciting, and I also just thought that there's something very complex and awkward about a father-daughter relationship in general at times. And there was a weird, dark humor to that dynamic within these circumstances that I found really appealing and almost relatable. Like nobody has, well, most people have probably not been in this particular situation, but you can still relate to these two characters trying to get to know each other and understand each other um, and almost make up for lost time. So I thought that was really cool. 
And uh, since we're talking about characters, it's probably time I bring some actors into this conversation. Uh, Bryce and Jonas, like, what was it like, uh, like finding these characters, and like, what what drew you in? Uh, maybe we'll start with Bryce, since uh, you play a particularly uh, interesting fellow. Um. Yeah, I it's it's funny. I usually um play guys who kill guys um it is usually the yeah um but i with this one it um i think sort of like from auditioning and then um reem and i got in touch with each other pretty quickly and so much of the film was kind of being shot without me at first um there was about like two weeks where they were just shooting everything that took place inside the house and um but reem and i were like on the phone talking about the character a lot and i was even sending reem like videos of me doing scenes and um and she was like no 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 less 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 and i was like really trying to play this guy at first almost more like um like caesar romero's joker um and mm -hmm. and she was like no 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 less i want him to do almost nothing um and so so kind of finding the character like a lot of the time kind of was like a lot of looking over at Reem and being like am I doing anything do I like am I am I like is anything coming through and she was like yes it's great just keep going so a lot of trusting and a lot of um but but different and um and yeah so I love that idea that you were actually like sort of remote collaborating even before you guys got to set. Like, is that something you normally do or is this just something you had to do for this role? Is this like a COVID thing? No, it was it was more something that I, Reem had gotten in touch with me almost immediately. And then it and then it was just a lot of like emailing back and forth about the person. And then I was rehearsing it and playing playing with it. And then it just kind of turned into one thing where I was just like, Hey Reem, what do you think of this? And then it just kind of, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. Nice, uh, yeah. Jonas. Uh, I haven't talked to you yet. What was uh, what was the process like for you in terms of working with the director, working with the script? It, well, it was the opposite of Bryce because I, I I got a call the night before this character was filming because they had another actor and they they lost the actor and they were scrambling and I I could go way back with with Jordan and and Borga the other producers and I got a call one night from Jordan saying Hey man uh, how do you feel about coming up to Sudbury tomorrow morning and and shooting uh, this movie uh, which is a very exciting call for an actor to get. Because, you know, we don't get those calls ever. So I said, sight unseen, I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm there, I'm there. And then I quickly read the script. <laughs> and I, I, I was very relieved to see that it was a, a great piece of writing and that this character uh, was still alive. And I, I, I luckily, had, I, I've played versions of this character before in other, like, crime movies. So I, I felt, like Bryce plays murderers usually, I play... I, I, I tend to play like Weasley, fast talking uh, uh, con artist types. So I, I slipped right into it. I didn't have time to really work it with, with Reem. So for us, it was very much on the fly and on the day. And luckily, I just, I, I feel like I kind of slipped right into it. And she really liked what I was doing. So it all just kind of worked out. It was sort of a, a, a an actor's dream story for me. It was great. Yeah, because I mean, the character feels fairly effortless. Like if you hadn't told me that, I wouldn't have guessed that you just sort of like popped into set one day and were like, oh, I'm this character. Yeah, I, I, and that's just, I mean, that's just because I'm such a naturally brilliant actor. No, it's because, <laughs> it's because I've, I've played these guys before. I mean, we, you know, actors can get lazy sometimes and slip into, like it sounds like for Bryce, it was really a, a matter of, of sort of stretching his usual version of this character and finding something. And he found something so interesting. I, Bryce, I, I love your performance in the movie. I, I, I love your performance in the movie. For, for me, it was, it wasn't, an, there wasn't a lot of, there was no prep. I, I came in and I just slipped into a version of this guy that I, you know, a little bit influenced by stuff I've played before and then a little bit influenced by, you know, some people that I know, but I won't get into that. So, but it was so much fun. I had, I had such a great time and, and working with these ladies was, was, a, was a dream. It was a great experience. Sounds awesome. Maddie, what, uh, what's in store for the film? Like, uh, what's the response been? 
Yeah, I mean, it's just starting its release in the US. It's being distributed by Epic Pictures. So we're starting to have a lot of press around it kind of this week and last week, which has been really exciting. And we'll we'll see where it goes from there. Um, Cheryl, I know you've tracked some some of the press and a bit of the coverage that we've gotten, but but yeah, it's really just starting to to ramp up in terms of its distribution and its availability in the US as well. That's amazing. Congrats. And uh, Cheryl, what's uh, what's next for you? Are you doing more of these? Uh, 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 maybe it isn't unusual, but more thrillers or something completely different? Uh, yeah, a little bit of both those things. I have another thriller going to camera in June, but it is quite different from this. Um, it's more of a run for your life type of film. This has a run for your life, but then there's a nice big pause where our characters get to know each other and spend time together and a lot of the what makes it special is their relationship whereas the other one is uh, going to be a lot more um, action non-stop heart pounding until the end sort of type of movie so that one is currently called Civil and hopefully will be out I don't know two years <laughs> 18 months you know that kind of thing sounds good uh, Bryce, what are you working on next? Uh, I'm wrapping up post on two short films that I wrote and directed. Excellent. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. So I'm staring at a computer a lot these days. Well, I hope we potentially see them at uh, CFF next year. I would love that, yeah. And uh, Maddie, what's next for you? Um, I'm currently in prep on the second season of a digital series that I produce called Gaming Girls. So we go to camera on the 14th of March. Um, so that's what I'm focused on right now. Sounds good. Jonas, are you going to play another weasel? What's going on with you? Uh, I've got another movie with this uh, that I, I made that's playing at this very festival called Ashgrove that I wrote and produced and, and star in with Amanda Bruegel. So check that out if you have a CFF uh, passion. Um, and then I shot um, another film in, in January. We just shot a, a, a rom romantic comedy that I wrote called The End of Sex, starring me and, and Emily Hampshire, that will come out later this year. And I'm going to camera in August on another project that I wrote and produced that's going to be directed by Fab Filippo that I am going to be acting in called The Time We Met. So it's been a very busy year for me. Jonas, we got to watch out for you. You're everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a big push before I retire, so. <laughs> uh, I don't retire this uh, soon. I think you got a couple more years left. A couple more, hopefully, yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks so much for being a part of the CFF this year. And uh, we hope to check you out next year and uh, some of your other projects, maybe even this year. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Al. Sit back, relax when it's the greatest. Don't get better than this.